There's notation for permutations without replacement, just like there's notations for other permutations. So um, how do we write this without having to write out 52 times 51 times 50 times 50 or 49 times? Like, how do we write this without having to just write that entire thing out? Well, there's this thing called the factorial function, and it's this exclamation mark right here. And factorial basically means take whatever number's in front of the factorial, so in this case, like 4, and multiply it by every number below it until you get to 1. So it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 7 factorial will be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 100 factorial would be 100 times 99 times 98 times 97 times 96. So can you see how that actually really shortens your notation quite a bit? Because for 4, this might not be so bad to just write out, right? But anything bigger than, you know, 10 is going to be just impossible to write out. So we have this factorial notation that helps us. And actually, we have a button in our calculator that does factorials. So you don't have to calculate this by multiplying each one out individually. One interesting, oh, two interesting things. One factorial is obviously 1, because 1 times every number below it until you get to 1 is just 1 times nothing else, just one, right? And then there's this kind of general consensus in math that zero factorial equals one. And um, it seems really odd, I know, but just believe me because um, we need that to be one because there are times when you're going to be dividing by zero factorial and if it was anything other than one, it would make a problem. So um, basically zero factorial is one, okay. So let's look at how we could actually write this in permutation. So we have our pool ball example. If we wanted to write the, if we wanted to say the first example where we were ordering just 16 of them all in a row, right? Then we could just write 16 factorial. In fact, we could even put that in your calculator. Your calculator might look different than this. And in fact, a lot of calculators just have um, an exclamation mark somewhere on them, like on one of their buttons. Um, so if it has that, awesome, you don't even have to do this. But I'm going to show you on a couple of different calculators that you might use. This calculator on the left is like our yellow calculators at school. This calculator on the right is like our graphing calculators at school. So the first one, if you have something like this, you're going to look for probability because remember, we're doing probability. So anytime you see the word probability, that's probably a good indication that what we're looking for is going to be in there. So you're going to push probability and there you go. There's your exclamation mark. So I'm going to quit here and I'm going to say if I wanted to do 9 factorial, I could do 9 and then probability and then go down to the exclamation mark and push enter. And there you go. It just gives it to me. Um, it just works it out. That's a lot faster than 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? Okay, so on a graphing calculator, it is also in the probability menu, but you don't see the probability menu on a button. So you push math and then you arrow over to probability, and then there's the factorial button right there. So you just go down to there, but it's gonna, um, it's actually gonna give me 37.32 factorial because I forgot to put a number in first. So let's say we're gonna do, well, let's do our billiard example. Okay, 16 math factorial. And we get, see, remember, our answer didn't look like that, did it? It was like, you know, 2 trillion. Well, remember this E13? Do you remember what that means? That means that I'm going to take the decimal place. This is the same as scientific notation. It's 2.09 times 10 to the 13th. That's what this means. Um, and if you're in chemistry or um, other sciences, you use scientific notation quite a bit. But anyway, what this means is we're going to multiply this by 10 to the 13th. In other words, we're moving the decimal place 13 spaces to the right. So if we moved this 13 spaces to the right, it would sure look like that number we were looking for before. So that's how you do factorial in your calculator. But what about when we only had three, when we were only picking three, we couldn't just do 16 factorial, right? Because we just wanted 16 times 15 times 14. That's all we wanted. We didn't want anything else. Okay. So I want 16 times 15 times 14, but 16 factorial would be times 13, times 12, times 11, times 10, times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Okay. So how do I get rid of that 13 times 12? Well, I'd need to divide, right? I need to divide this by 13 
times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I need to divide all of those numbers out, right? And then these would all cancel. Like all of these numbers would cancel out, right? And all I'd be left with is 16 times 15 times 14, which is exactly what I wanted. So how can I write that in factorial notation? I just want 16 times 15 times 14. Well, on the top, I had 16 factorial, right? And what did I divide it by? I divided it by 13 times 12 times, okay, I'm not gonna say it over and over again, but you get the picture, right? What is that on the bottom? Well, that's 13 factorial, right? So I had 16 factorial divided by 13 factorial. So do you see that if I, 13 factorial basically cancels out all the top stuff and then I get that. So our actual notation for this is written this way. Remember N, N is the number of things that we choose from and R is how many of them we choose. So um, in our pool ball example, we had 16 balls total and we were only choosing three of them. So N would be 16 and r is going to be 3. So if we put that into our formula here, this is n factorial, so that would be 16 factorial, over n minus r factorial. So n is 16 minus r, so that is 16 minus 3, which is 13 over 13 factorial. That's exactly what we just figured out, right? So you could do it the other way that we did it um, on the other slide, every time and you could just like figure that out in your head but truly in most cases if you just start to remember this is why the formula works you can just start applying it um so this is our formula n factorial over n minus r factorial again this is for permutations when there is no repetition when we're talking about permutations there's a couple different notations that you might see um, we're not going to delve really deep into those in this class, but uh, you might see them in um, other tests and things. So just recognize what they mean. So permutation, sometimes you'll see P with a parentheses and then N comma R. And so that just tells you that N again is the number of things you're choosing from, R is the number of times you choose it. Sometimes you're going to see a big P like this with an N up top on the left and an R on the bottom. Uh, this is the most common one that I see almost exclusively but I definitely see these other ones um somewhat often but um this one it's going to be n is going to be on the left and r is going to be on the right so if this said um you know if you saw something that was like 15 p3 that means I have 15 objects and I want to figure out how many permutations there are if I pick three of them and so then you could just plug that into the formula this would be 15 factorial over 15 minus 3 factorial, which is 12 factorial.